Well, good morning. I know you got a lot of important business to get through this week, but I do want to say how grateful I am and what a privilege it is to stand in front of this group. Uh, thank you, President Kelly. Uh, thank you for every single day advocating for the 350,000 heroes that you know that you represent with passion. And to General Secretary Treasurer Lima, thank you. Uh, this is an incredible leadership team. I got to use a point of personal privilege and a shout out to your fifth district VP uh, from Bethel, Minnesota resident, Tom Thornburg. Tom, it's great to always see you. And every delegate in this room representing your 350,000 of your membership, look, you got busy jobs, you got families, you travel here to do the important work of understanding. I'll often have people tell me, look, I'm really not that into politics. My response to that is, too damn bad, politics is into you. And if you're not here advocating for that, if you're not here advocating for the messages, it's hard to get it done. So uh, as a card-carrying member of my state teachers union, um, I feel very proud of that. I saw the other day I got attacked by, I got attacked by the, I got attacked by the Wall Street Journal for being richer than my disclosure says because I have two defined benefit pension plans. Um, I, seems like that's a little different than Google stock that was handed to you, but um, that's what we did. So uh, maybe a few more of us should be dues paying members, but I can promise you this. When Vice President Harris and I win this election, we'll have your back just like you've had ours this entire time. And just as I've done as governor and just as the vice president has done, I look forward to working hand in hand with you to deliver for the locals back home because that's what really matters. But if you'd bear with me, um, it's a privilege to be in front of this group, but I have to say it's also personal. Uh, the Minnesotans know this and some of you in this room might know. Last year we lost one of our bravest firefighting heroes and I personally lost a dear friend. Chris Parsons was fire chief, fire captain from St. Paul. He worked closely with us um, and was president of the Minnesota Professional Firefighters. Chris was six foot seven, stood out in any crowd, but it's hard to imagine his personality was bigger than that six foot seven. He was the most generous and kind and funny individual that I had ever met. One conversation with that guy would make your entire day better. Tragically, we lost Chris in the line of duty. It's kind of heartbreak that no family and no community should have to endure because every hero deserves to come home at the end of every shift. And know this, we see your noble courage. We're forever grateful to you for going above and beyond to keep all of us safe. And we're committed to building a future that you and your families deserve. As Minnesota's governor, I was proud to bolster resources for firefighter training and education to invest in the equipment and the facilities to keep you safe, and to sign the most comprehensive fighter fighter well-being legislation in the nation. The resiliency to do this job is incredible. The physical toll it takes on your body, but the emotional toll and the time away from your family, we understand that. And putting the resources into it is absolutely critical. That's why I'm honored to be on a ticket with someone else who has long supported your essential work. As a native Californian, Vice President Harris knows explosive, dangerous, and unpredictable nature of wildfires in that state. She's been to the memorials, knows the depth of sacrifice that you and your families go through. In fact, it's a matter of family for her. The Vice President's brother-in-law, Andy Emhoff, spent his career as a firefighter in Santa Cruz, California, and retired as an IAFF member in good standing. And as, <laughs> as California Attorney General, and as Frank can attest, Kamala Harris sued the big banks for mismanaging your state's pension fund. And when she won, she returned hundreds of millions of dollars to firefighters and other public workers and to their families. As vice president, she cast the deciding vote on the American Rescue Plan, which helped keep workers on the job. And I'll say this, it kept the public safe during the pandemic and it lo let local fire departments hire, train, and retra retain more of the firefighters that we needed. And under her leadership, the administration gave much needed raises to more than 11,000 federal firefighters. Yeah. 
When we're in office, we'll make sure you have all the resources and protections you need to do your jobs and your service is respected and that you come home safe every night. We know exactly who built this country. It's people like the folks in this room, firefighters, police officers, construction trades, teachers and nurses and veterans who contributed their contributions to our nations long after they got out of military service. It was you who built the middle class. And we know that when unions are strong, America's strong. Look, this, this is the time of year that talk is cheap. But that's why Vice President Harris is proudly part of the most pro-labor administration in history, unafraid to walk picket lines with workers demanding better pay and conditions. And that's why she rescued pensions of more than one million of our union sisters and brothers, workers and retirees, and insisted that prevailing wage jobs spring from federal investments. It's Your construction brothers and sisters know that one. It's that same spirit that animated my fight for labor in Minnesota. As governor, I signed one of the biggest packages of pro-worker policies in history into law, making it easier for workers to form unions, strengthening worker protections, and banning captive audience meetings. Today, Minnesota is one of the best states for workers in the nation. And guess what? It's one of the best states for business. You don't have to choose between protecting workers and protecting business. They go hand in hand. That's, that's vice president's and my vision for the entire country. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they have something a little different in mind. The only thing these guys know about working people is how to take advantage of them, how to not pay them. Every single chance they've gotten, they've waged a war on workers and the ability to collectively bargain. When it comes to so-called right-to-work laws that deprive unions of funds they need, Donald Trump has said he supports right-to-work 100%. Everybody in this room knows right-to-work means right-to-work for less, right-to-work more dangerously, right-to-work for no pensions. It doesn't mean the ability to collectively bargain to fight with the dignity that work brings to each and every one of us. Look, I'll keep saying it. Words are cheap. Actions is all you should care about. Make sure you're counting on what was delivered. When Donald Trump was president, he blocked overtime benefits for millions of workers. He opposed efforts to raise the minimum wage. And he even proposed slashing budgets for federal fire service programs. Those are just simply facts. But look, it's not just what they've done. It's what they're going to do. This is the big thing. One of the goals of their Project 2025 is to screw the middle class, making it harder for workers to collectively bargain, allowing employers to drastically cut overtime or eliminate it, slash taxes for the ultra-wealthy by imposing a national sales tax on the rest of us. Look, I've said this, I'm an old-time football coach. If you draw up a playbook, you plan on using it. Project 2025 is a plan to reshape what America looks like, moving away from the middle class and putting it right back on the oligarchs and the wealthy at the top. He said he's going to re repeal the Affordable Care Act. That thing is pre-existing conditions. Those are things that make sure that our family gets health care. And for many of our families, and I know you don't get to participate in it, but your families do, my mom does, Social Security and Medicare are life-saving programs for them. Instead of funding those programs, they talk about cutting them. So here, this is what I always say. If you got a billion dollars, you don't give a damn if your Social Security check shows up. But if you're like my mom, that's how you pay for your food. That's how you pay for your heat. That's how things get done. So that check, pretty damn important to protect it. Again, use their own words. This is a guy who told his friends down at Mar-a-Lago, and this is a direct quote. Look, all of you are rich as hell. We're going to give you a tax cut while telling workers that wages are too high. That says it all. And again, if you're confused on where you're going to go, think about what impacts you, your life, and your family the most. So let me tell you exactly what Vice President Harris will, and I will do when we get elected. As President, then President Harris will sign the PRO Act, making it easier for unions to organize. We'll protect Safer Grant Program. 
It, it's good to see you say this. If you have to spend any time thinking if you want to support the PRO Act, that pretty much tells you where you're at because that's a pretty easy one. Same thing with the Safer Grant program. We know it's essential to helping serve and protect communities, especially as we are uh, starting to see intensive heat waves. We'll keep fighting to protect your retirement benefits, lowering taxes for working families, and finally making corporations just pay their fair share. They're doing fine. They're doing fine. They can pay their fair share. And again, things like Social Security, things like the GI Bill, programs that make a difference, paid family and medical leave, affordable child care so you can go do your job. That just makes sure that families aren't just surviving and getting by, but they're thriving and getting ahead. I talked about that idea of defined benefit pension plans. They complained that I had two defined benefit pension plans. In, 1960, or in 1980, 60% of people had defined benefit pension plans. The middle class was strong. Today, 4% have it, and they're trying to take those away from us. You change the middle class by investing in the middle class. We're proud of the plan that we put forward. Again, Donald Trump trying to hide from that, uh, that Project 2025 plan. They're going to use it. They're going to use it. It's written out. They know what's there. And look, they're not going to wait a few years to do it. They're going to get an opportunity to do it. So we know what it is. Donald Trump doesn't want to tell you what's in there. You can look for yourself. You can see what they're trying to do. They go on TV. They deny it. They say that he's not being treated fairly. These are their words. They put it on paper. They're telling you what they're going to do. Kamala Harris, she's ready to hold him accountable on the debate stage. Tell me you're not looking forward to that. Look, I know you're busy. You're going to be watching Monday Night Football or something. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good because, again, as I said this, this is going to impact you. The things that are said on that debate stage are going to impact your retirement. They're going to impact your kids' education. They're going to impact infrastructure. These are things that matter to us. So look, some of you in here, and I'm going to say this because I know we're bipartisan. Some of the gray hairs in here, I know what you're thinking. And I remember it, too, because it's my family. When Republicans used to talk about freedom, they meant it. They meant it. Not anymore. These guys over there, they want government to have the freedom to invade every corner of your life, from our union halls to our kids' schools, even our doctor's offices. Vice President and I, we got a little bit different vision of this. We believe that you, not politicians, should be made free to make your own health care choices. We believe that workers deserve to collectively bargain for fair wages, safe working conditions, good health care, and secure retirement. No interference from government. As a union member, as a union member, our union halls are the purest form of democracy. The opportunity to speak your mind, elect leadership, speak what you want on your platform, and then go, advertise, or go advocate for it. That's how democracy is supposed to work. These are folks that want to make it difficult to do that. Little things. We should be able to make sure that government is there to make sure that corporations have to keep our air and water clean. You can make money and still protect water and protect air. We believe that people should be free to get a good education that puts them into the middle class, not crippling debt for a lifetime. And we believe that our kids should be free to go to school without worrying about being shot dead in their halls. Now, I want to say something about this. I want to say something about this. I know guns. I'm a 24-year veteran. I'm a hunter. I was one of the best shots in Congress, and I got the trophies to prove it. I could outshoot them every year. But I'm not going to stand by and let someone say that this is about the Second Amendment when our first responsibility is protection of our kids. It is not a false choice. We can have and protect the Second Amendment and keep guns out of our schools that are killing our kids and do things right. That stuff's common sense. Vice President Harris brings that to the White House. That's a future we can build together. We don't have to go to every damn family gathering and fight about things that we mostly agree on. We don't have to find ways to divide us, and we can have legitimate policy discussions that differ on issues but come to common goals. And on issues of labor rights, of middle class rights, of paying your fair share, of cutting taxes for the middle class, we're going to need you with us to win that fight. So I'd ask all of you, 
I am a former football coach, and I give halftime speeches all the time. But I do have to admit this. I know I'm in Red Sox country. Go Twins. Um, so uh, I'm going to try a baseball analogy, people, so bear with me. Game seven of the World Series. We're down a couple runs, but we got the rally hats on. We got runners on base, and our heavy hitters are on deck. We got the hometown going wild. Sisters and brothers in labor, it's time for you to step up to the plate. We've got 69 days to win this thing, 69 days to protect labor rights, 69 days to do things that we know people who have laid their life on the line like Chris Parsons to protect this as a public service and are simply asking to be treated fairly. That's what we get to do. On that 70th day, we wake up and know that the policies that positively impact you are going to become law. That's what we have to believe. So I'll tell you what, our hitters are coming up. It's you. This is a vision about the possibility of America. This is the vision about a positive America. This is a vision about what we can do together. And the reason that I feel so good is, knowing that the heavy hitters in this room are coming up next is, you know how to fight. That's all you know how to do. That's all you've had to do every step of the way to improve this profession and to bring people into it. So as the next President of the United States always says, when we fight, we win. Thank you all.